Hello and welcome to the Vector Software Testing Symposium. My name is Marcelo Rosales and I have been working in Vector Network and Distribution Teams for almost two years as a senior project engineer. With me is Salvador Almanza from Infineon Technologies. And in the next 20 minutes, we will show you the rapid prototype concepts according with the AutoSAR methodology using Vector Toolchain and Infineon Audis architecture. In this presentation, we will define the system description, the network ECU virtualization, the ECU configuration, and the hardware implementation. Let me introduce Salvador. Hi, Salvador. Hi, Marcelo, and thank you for the introduction. Hello, everybody. My name is Salvador Almanza. I'm a principal system applications engineer. I've been with Infineon for almost two years, and thank you for attending this presentation. I hope you will enjoy it. As you all know, the system complexity of the automotive systems is been growing exponentially and will continue in this direction. To overcome this complexity in hardware and especially in software, we need the smartest way to architect, design, and implement these systems. AutoSAR provide a powerful methodology to develop software and hardware in parallel, even the virtualization of a full system. Making possible implement and test software before the hardware deployment. Vector provide a tool chain supporting AutoSAR methodology to accomplish this complex task. For example, pre-vision for systems architecture, network topology, and AutoSAR software design, including communication databases and different protocols. DaVinci tools, for example, Configurator 5 and Developer for ECU-centric software design and basic software configuration. V-Virtual Target for ECU virtualization for base software emulation and ECU integration use cases. Canu for network simulation, virtual ECU execution, software verification and validation. This presentation focuses on the tools interoperability from the system design to the hardware deployment. From the concept phase of a product, there are a lot of unknowns, being the processing hardware unit, for instance, the microcontroller, to be one of them. With the proper tool chain, the application software can be developed from the very beginning and even being tested. This is possible by virtualizing the hardware system to run the application software. Vector tools like B-Virtual Target and Canu supports this concept. Now, Salvador will describe the scope of the system architecture. Thank you, Marcelo. This slide provides a simplified description of the implemented hardware system. The network topology is composed of four physical hardware boards using the Infineon Aurix TC3770X, a tri-board with a TC397XX, and two application kits also with a TC397XX on board. And also a virtual node that is fully implemented in couple. The purpose of the gateway is just switching data between one Ethernet channel into another, just like an Ethernet switch. This is for the purpose of efficient modeling and performance metrics that will be described in a future webinar. The main focus will be on the triboard and the application kits gating data from Ethernet into KNFD. The triboard will consume this data to modify the LED states on the board. The same data is split and sent over KNFD to the application kits to modify the LED states for the upper and lower part of the full LED array on the triboard. This is a simple application just to show and prove the concept of virtualization and software use. One of the objectives is to create this application software just once and reuse it in multiple demos using the Aurix architecture. In other words, to create a library of AURSAR files, for example, ECUCs, ECU extracts, etc., and application source code as well, available to everyone. 
The gateway board in the system is implemented using the Infineon RX TC3770X, which has three tri-core version 1.6 cores with lockstep and a maximum frequency of 300 MHz each. It has 6 MB of program flash, up to 256K of data flash, and 4 MB of RAM. One of the main characteristics of this device is having 2 Gigabit Ethernet channels. The TC397XX is a 6-core device, 4 of them with lockstep, all of them capable to execute up to 300 MHz. It has 16 MB of program flash, up to 1 MB of data flash, and up to 6 MB of RAM. System scalability and software reuse is always in mind at Infineon and the Aurix architecture makes possible significant reusability within the Aurix TC3X7 family and other families as well. The software architecture is very simple. It is just application, sensor actuator, and complex driver software components. As we will see in the next slide, the virtual LED control is mapped to the CANU ECU, and the LED control software components are mapped to the Tribor, L-Word, and H-Word ECUs. This implies serial communication over different networks shown in the network topology slide. As Marcelo will explain soon, the system description that contains all the network communications, ECU instances, and software component descriptions will be exported from Prevision, which is the AuroSAR system authoring tool. Additionally, an individual ECU extract can be exported and used for ECU configuration. Later in the presentation, I will describe the configuration and hardware deployment process. Before, let's review the concept of a network simulation and ECU virtualization. That will help us to simplify the ECU integration later. This table shows the software and hardware mapping to indicate on which process unit the software components will run. This is a mandatory concept in AuroSAR. And now, my colleague Marcelo will explain the rapid prototyping workflow. Thank you, Salvador. In this slide, we show the different use cases of ECU virtualization. First, software test. Early in the project, the target hardware platform, for example, the MCU may not be known yet. However, software development can start using the PC and virtual environment to execute AutoSAR software components. The same application code will run on the real target. ECU test, a full ECU virtualized, meaning AutoSAR software component and base software, it is possible to debug the application code, test network communications, and testing the ECU configuration. During the system testing, all the ECU and intercommunication are tested. Virtual ECUs can be replaced with the corresponding real hardware and evaluate the system behavior. The application-based software code running in the virtual and real ECU are the same, except for the operating system and the driver layer, or MCAL. Finally, during the regression test, every test scenario could be tested. This is especially used for complex use cases where using the real hardware is too difficult and also offers advantages of executing the system at higher speed, therefore reducing testing time. Here we are reviewing the different possibilities for the rapid prototyping virtualization and the tools involved in this process. Well, once the system topology, for example, the ECU and communication network, including the communication artifacts following through the networks, for example, PDUs and signal, an auto source system description ARXML file can be exported from the AutoSAR authoring tool, in this case, Prevision, and this file can be directly imported into Canoe using the model generation wizard to create a simulation of all networks and connected ECU. The main purpose 
is to test the communication database of every network in the system prior to the ECU development. This provides certainty before exporting an ECU extract of the system description. In other words, helps to validate that the communication objects are properly modeled, for example, frames, PDUs, and signals. Let's take a look at an example of the model created using the model generation wizard. This is the configuration created with the model generation wizard. So what we are doing here is using this um, application within Canoe, uh, which is able to import the system description file from provision. And what the model generation wizard will do is it will create the, the networks that you have in the description file. Like in this case is two CAN networks and one Ethernet network. After you execute the model generation wizard, it will create within Canoe these three networks with the old couple code needed to emulate uh, the system description behavior. Um, then you could easily start the simulation and evaluate if those uh, the values expected from your database are properly set. So in this case, you could check the timing uh, from your signals, if it's properly set, it, like in this case it's 10 milliseconds. And Ethernet, you can see all your PDUs uh, running and your signals uh, uh, within the PDU, of course. And you can evaluate as well the two CAN channels. And basically, this is the purpose of the demo, to show you how to use the system description file in advance um, to test uh, your network communications. An important concept that allows to test the out of our software components in the system when no ECU configuration is available is the base software emulation use case. To implement this use case, a software component description or system extract are exported from Prevision and imported into a virtual target to create a virtual ECU. That will execute the application software component, the RTE, and the emulated base software. The source code is compiled using Microsoft Visual Studio to generate a DLL which is the system under test on or the virtual ECU. This DLL is imported and executed by Canoe, offering the possibility of debugging the ECU software on the virtual environment, an early detection of bugs during the development. Finally, during the ECU integration use case, the ECU parameters are configured using DaVinci Configurator with B-Virtual Target add-on when the configuration is done. The tool offers the option to generate a code for a real or virtual target. The virtual target can be used to generate code for the virtual ECU that eventually will be compiled into a DLL using Microsoft Visual Studio. The main difference with the previous use case is that this virtual ECU, in addition to the software components on the RTE, will contain the full base software configuration, except the operating system and MCAL, which are virtualized. The main advantage is that once the ECU functionality has been verified, the same base software configuration, RTE, and application can be reused on the real hardware target, as we explain in the next slide. But first, let's take a look to a demo. Okay, uh, difference from the previous demo that I show you, uh, this, conf this canoe configuration was created out of B virtual target. 
Uh, the purpose of this is we are evaluating the application software from the ECUs in the system. So the base software is being emulated by B Virtual Target. So in this case, we got the same three networks, two CAN networks and one Ethernet, with all the ECUs emulated. All the ECUs and network are emulated. The important part here is the source code of the application is based in C code, is the same code that will be used in the real hardware target that Salvador will show you in the final demo. So in this case, um, you can see the DLLs out of, the DLLs that we got out of the B virtual target, those are loaded, every ECU got uh, their own DLL, okay? So in this case, we increase the, the configuration scope to with some panels to see what we should be expecting in the real hardware. So if we start this uh, simulation, you will see the sequence of the LEDs in the boards. So here it's fully simulated. You could check as well the trace window with all the PDUs and the CAN signals. And the purpose again is to test the application software before even flash it in the real hardware. This is the purpose of the second demo. As I explained before, once the ECU integration use case has been successfully implemented, the same configuration and application can be reused to build the final software that will run into the real hardware. What is left is to configure the operating system and MCAL. The same CANU configuration can be used by connecting the real ECU to the communication bus and disable the corresponding ECU in the simulation. And now, Salvador will describe the ECU configuration and hardware implementation. Thank you, Marcelo. As Marcelo already explained, during the classical AutoSAR ECU development process, several tools are involved in the workflow, from concept and system design to system verification according to the V model. The main objective is minimizing the effort during the ECU implementation and integration using the real hardware. The tool for this purpose is DaVinci Configurator. In the AutoSAR methodology, software and hardware can be developed in parallel. At the same time, the MCAL and the OS can be configured. Once the virtual ECU behavior has been verified and confirmed to work, the same ECU configuration can be reused with the MCAL and the OS configurations. This is done in the Vinci configurator, and when the configuration is ready, code generation for the real target is possible. After this point, an executable file or hex is generated by compiling the full ECU source code using a cross compiler, and then downloading the hex file using a programming tool or debugger. In our case, the target MCU is the Infineon Aurix TC3X7 family and a specific the TC377TX with two Ethernet channels and the TC37 TC397 for the rest of the system. CANU is used to verify the communications and execute existing ECU, sorry, virtual ECUs in the system. This picture shows the full hardware setup. If you remember from the network topology slide, a virtual ECU is sending data from CANU to Ethernet channel zero on the gateway board. This data is switched over to channel one and sent to the driver ECU, which consumes the data and forward the data split in two halves to the L-word and H-word ECUs. Let's take a look to a short demo. This is a simple system, four physical ECUs. 
the gateway using the driver TC3770X to transfer the LED states PDU coming from CANU from Ethernet 0 to Ethernet 1 via the PDU router in the Microsoft stack, similar to an Ethernet switch. The full word ECU in the triboard TC397, who receives the LED states PDU and displays the LED states on board, what we call the full word, and forward the upper or high word and lower word to the application kits via CANFD using signal gating. This ECU is getting a timestamp from the system timer zero and send it via Ethernet to CANU through the gateway. The L word ECU implemented on the application kit TC397 who receives the lower part of the LED states PDU and displays the corresponding LED states on board. The H-Work ECU also implemented on the application kit TC397, who receives the higher part of the LED states PDU and displays the corresponding LED states on board. Finally, one virtual ECU fully implemented in couple, who is generating the LED states PDU using the VN5640 send it to the full word ECU through the Ethernet gateway and receives the system timer zero timestamp sent by the full word ECU through the gateway. As Marcelo explained before, the full system has been modeled in prevision and each ECU has been configured individually in DaVinci Configurator 5 using the ECU extracts generated by prevision. Let's start the simulation in Canoe. We are using the real bus option because we are physically connecting the gateway board to the network or the Ethernet network. We can observe in the trace window the LED states being transmitted uh, <clears throat> from CANU to the full board ECU through the gateway. In the triboard or full board ECU, we see the states of the LEDs to be updated accordingly. And then the data is being forwarded to the L word and H word respectively using the CANFD network. This demo and presentation is focusing on the workflow using the AURUSAR methodology, using the AURIX architecture as a hardware platform and enabling the creation of ready-to-use examples that can be reused through different Aurix TC3XX family. The next step is using this implementation for more sophisticated demos, showing the performance and architectural scalability offered by the Infineon Aurix family. And with this, we conclude our hardware demo. Now, Marcelo will conclude with some important points. Thank you, Salvador. We have reviewed the main benefits of the rapid prototyping and ECU virtualization using the classical AutoSAR methodology, and how the powerful vector tools and robust microcontroller architectures like Infineon Autix family facilitate achieving the goals and milestones during the ECU development process. And this brings me to the end of the presentation AutoSource software, rapid prototyping, and system design workflow overview. We look forward to your questions and to meet you in the Q&A session. See you there.